All right, so um, here was the problem. Remember, we had um, two groups in the market uh, with the following inverse demand curves. The monopolist has a zero cost, zero marginal and zero fixed cost. So uh, we considered the case um, where the monopolist price discriminate these two groups. So it's a third degree price discrimination. And we found that it's optimal for the monopolist to charge price 25 over 2 for group 1 and 75 over 2 for group 2 and both groups will buy exactly equal amount of output 25 over 2. However, if the monopolist is not allowed to price discriminate these two groups and then we found the aggregate demand and then aggregate uh, inverse demand and then the uniform pricing, the monopolist optimal uh, uh, pricing uh, would be 75 over 4 and so total demand and the total product that's sold in this market is 25 over 4. Okay so the next question the third question I would like to tackle now is well what happens to this total surplus producer surplus consumer surplus and the inefficiency under these two scenarios under third degree price discrimination and uniform pricing, all right? So let's first do the uniform pricing, all right? So uh, uniform pricing. In order to calculate the uh, surpluses and the dead weight loss, I need this P price versus quantity graph, all right? And in that graph, I need three functions. The inverse demand curve or the demand curve, the marginal revenue curve of the monopolist and the marginal cost curve. So here, because the cost is zero, the marginal cost curve is actually the horizontal line itself. So this is quantity, oh, this is, yeah, this is the uniform price, so quantity versus price. So the marginal cost curve is also this. Let's not forget that, the marginal cost curve as well. All right, well, the demand curve is something like this. It's linear. Let's find the intercepts because we're going to use them in order to calculate the surpluses. Um, so the inverse demand for, uh, for the, you know, under uniform pricing, we look at the aggregate demand. So when the quantity is zero, the maximum price is 75 over 2. So this intercept is 75 over 2. When... Uh, P is zero, the horizontal axis intercept is going to be Q equals 75 divided by uh, 6. So the 3 and 75 basically cancel out. It's 25 divided by 2, so this point. All right. The marginal cost curve is this. What else? The marginal revenue curve. We don't need to calculate that. All right. Uh, all I know is that it's beneath the demand curve. All right. Okay, so what I know is that the marginal, oh, first of all, I need to find the total surplus under competitive market. So what is the total surplus under competitive market? It's basically the consumer surplus plus producer surplus. So here, because the marginal cost is zero, uh, the price in this competitive market should be zero, right? So price of the competitive market is equal to marginal cost in the competitive market. So price, therefore, which is equal to marginal revenue, which is equal to the, the inverse demand curve, right? So the inverse demand curve, the marginal cost curve intersects, that would be exactly the competitive equilibrium price. I mean zero. I know this is an awkward, it's like free, um, simply because the marginal cost is zero. And this would be the quantity. So therefore, this entire triangle would have been the producer surplus. Um, I'm sorry, um, the um, t uh, consumer surplus and hence the total surplus. All right, so the consumer surplus equals uh, the, uh, on the competitive market is equal to total surplus. Here in this example, the producer surplus is zero. But what I, what I care is the total surplus. It's this triangle. And it's basically 75 divided by 2 times 25 divided by 2. Divided by 2, right? So the height times the base divided by 2. So times 1 half. So that's basically the area 
uh, or the size of the total surplus. So I'm not going to calculate this. Um, so whatever that number is equal to, uh, you can just leave it as is. Well, simplify it. 25 times 75 divided by 8. Okay, whatever that number is. So what I need to ne uh, find now is the monopolist uh, consumer surplus, uh, monopolist uh, producer surplus, add them up, the monopolist total surplus. So the total surplus of the monopolist. And then the dead weight loss is going to be this, uh, this fellow minus the monopolist total surplus. So for that, I need to find the monopoly price on this graph. So the monopoly quantity is where the marginal revenue hits the marginal cost. So this is the uh, monopoly quantity. So this must be 25 over 4, so half of it. Well, uh, my graph isn't that perfect, sorry. And so the monopolist's price must be 75 over 4, maybe half of it. All right. So in this graph, then, the consumer surplus is this area because it's the area between the demand curve and the price line. And then the, uh, the producer surplus is this rectangle. The, so the price minus the supply curve, remember the marginal cost curve, which is the horizontal line, is the supply curve. So this square is the uh, producer surplus. Therefore, this triangle is the dead weight loss. Dead weight loss. Okay, so let's calculate the consumer surplus. It's basically 75 over 2 minus 75 over 4. So it is 75 over 4 times the base, 25 over 4, times, because this is triangle 1 half. All right, so therefore it's 25 times 75 divided by 16 times 2, uh, 32. This is consumer surplus. This is, well, then I need to find the producer surplus, okay? So the producer surplus is this rectangle. So it's 25 over 4 times 75 over 4. I don't need to divide it by 2 because it's not triangle. So it's 25 times 75 divided by 16. Very good. So the total surplus is the summation of these two things. Fine. Um, but you know what? I don't really need to calculate total surplus and then subtract it from this number. I just calculate the area of this triangle to find the dead weight loss. It's equal to the height, which is 75 over 4, times the base, which is 25 over 2 minus half of 25 over 2, which means half of 25 over 2, meaning um, 25 divided by 4, all right, times 1 half. So it's 25 times 75 divided by 1632. So that's the, well, by the way, in the exam, again, um, if you don't have a calculator, fine. Just, just leave it as is. I mean, you don't really need to calculate that number. Uh, just leave it. I mean, this is the correct solution. There's nothing wrong with this, all right? So leave it as is. So for that reason, I'm leaving as this way. Okay, so that's how we calculate the surpluses under uniform pricing. So let's see if I can do everything without erasing anything. So let's see. It's going to be a challenge. Well, now I'm going to calculate the, uh, the surpluses under third degree price discrimination. So how do I do that? There are two groups. So each group is going to have different surpluses. So for that reason, I need to draw, draw, draw the, the demand curves, the marginal revenue curves, etc., and the marginal cost curves separately. Well, you may wonder, can I do that for each question? Not really, because once again, here I can do that because the marginal cost is zero. And the marginal cost has nothing to do with Q1 and Q2. But if the, the cost is something like Q1 plus Q2, squared, all right, things would be a bit more complicated. Remember, you can't really split the uh, profit as the profit from uh, group one, profit from group two. So things may be, might be a little complicated. So this exercise cannot, may not be so straightforward in every scenario. So therefore, you, you better just know under s relatively simpler scenarios like this one, how do we calculate the surpluses and compare them? Okay, so this is 
P1, Q1 graph. This is oops, um, P2, Q2 graph. So the inverse demand curve is there for group one. Um, the, when Q is zero, P1 is 25. And when P is zero, Q1 is 25 over four. So this is what the demand curve looked like. Remember the marginal cost curve is the horizontal line, the marginal cost. So that point is again, the competitor, if this market, if this group was in a competitive market, all right, what would have been the price zero? What would have been the quantity for that particular group? 25 over four. So for group two, when Q is zero, price is 75, all right? And then when um, P, a Q is zero, quantity would be 75 divided by 12. Um, so 75 and 12, um, we can simplify it by dividing three. So it would be 25 over four, once again. So uh, once again, I mean the same. Um, here, once again, the marginal cost curve is the horizontal line. So therefore this would be the competitive equilibrium output and zero would be the competitive equilibrium price. So the marginal revenue from the second group is something like this. Marginal revenue from the first group is something like this. Marginal revenue, the marginal revenue. All right, so this is the monopolist quantity, Q2, which is 25 over two. Remember, this is group two. Sorry, maybe I should have put that earlier. This is group one. Um, and therefore the price is uh, for group two is 75 over two. And then for group one, the quantity is the same, 25 over two, and the price is the 25 over um, two. Okay. So all I have to do is to calculate the consumer surpluses, producer surpluses, and the deadweight losses. All right, so once again, this triangle is the consumer surplus from group one. This triangle is the consumer surplus from group two. So therefore the consumer surplus under this price discrimination is basically this triangle plus this triangle, the area of this triangle. So what is the area of this triangle? 25 over two. All right, 25 minus 25 over two is 25 over two times the base, 25 over two times one half, right? Because it's triangle plus um, 75 minus 75 over two, it's 75 um, over two times 25 over two uh, times one half. Again, this is because it's uh, um, a, a triangle. So this is the consumer surplus. What about the producer surplus? Well, the producer surplus is this rectangle because the marginal cost curve or the supply curve is, is the horizontal axis. So the rectangle is 25 over two times 25 over two plus 75 over two times 25 over two. All right, so that's the producer surplus. Um, and that's also, by the way, the, the monopolist profit. All right, so the producer surplus here is the monopolist profit and monopolist profit under uniform pricing. And the producer surplus here is the monopolist profit under price discrimination. All right, so we can find the total surplus by just adding them up and subtract it from the total surplus of the competitive market. Uh, it's exactly the, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the, 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 the total surplus of the competitive market is this big triangle plus this big triangle, right? Um, and then we subtract it. Or easier way is to the, the, the finding the, the, the area of this triangle plus this triangle because these are the areas of dead weight losses. So they are, the height is 25 over 2 times the base is 25 over 4 because 25 over 4 minus 25 over 2. Um, oh, wait a minute, there's a problem. 25 over 2 is higher than 25 over 4. So there is some mistake going on here. So this is quantity, this is quantity, this is quantity. Yeah, what is wrong? Okay, so, um, so if this is the 
the demand curve is this, right? 25 minus 4 Q1. So it is 25 over 4. Um, man, how is this possible? Um, and then this is 75 divided by 12. So I divided by 3, so it's going to be 25 divided by 4. Yeah, well then the quantities are, how come they are 25 over 2? Did I make a mistake somewhere? Give me a moment. Um, yep, so I realized that I made a mistake. Uh, in the previous video, when I was doing all these calculations, I actually found the quantities as 25 over 8, but then I put them as 25 over 2. I don't know why I made that mistake. Uh, well, it happens, you know, transferring numbers from he there to here, um, it's obvious mistake. So, good, at least I noticed that before I use those numbers. So now, so up until this point, it doesn't change anything because this was the uniform pricing case. The uniform pricing case has nothing to do with those numbers, all right? Um, and then uh, the, uh, in this case though, uh, I needed those numbers. So by the way, these, uh, the consumer surpluses and the producer surpluses are therefore wrong. So 25 over two times 25 over eight times one health. And then this, uh, this is gonna be again 25 over eight. All right, and then the square is going to be 25 over 2 times 25 over 8, and then 75 over 2 times 25 over 8. So that's the correct producer and consumer surpluses. And the dead weight loss is, once again, 25 over 2 times this difference, which is 25 over 4 minus 25 over 8. I mean, this is half of this. So I have one. I'm subtracting half of it from this one, so I must have the half of this, which is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, um, 25 over eight, okay? So this is the area, oh, times one half, because this is triangle, plus this triangle, which is 20, oh, 75. This is the height over two times the difference, 25 over 8 times 1 half. Again, because this is triangle. 